Now we're going ouch and about, bringing our mobile clinic to you. We've come to a theme park to help solve your medical mysteries. Zand is preparing the clinic ready for his first patient, while Chris is out in the park to answer your burning questions. At the clinic, Zand is open for business. Can I have the next patient, please? First up, it's not that duck. It's eight-year-old Thomas, and he's had a mouthful of his problem. So, Thomas, why have you come to the Ouchmobile today? Well, I've hardly lost any of my milk teeth, but all my friends have. What's the diagnosis, Zand? Sounds to me like a case of I've hardly lost any of my milk teeth, but all my friends have itis. Excellent diagnosis. How many have you lost? I've lost four. Yeah, and I've got one lucky one. Right, let's have a look. Give that one a wobble for me. Oh, that's brilliant. Look at that. And part of the explanation is that everyone's different, right? Like, you and your friends are all going to be different sizes, you've all got different colour hair, I mean, there's lots of different things about you, and your teeth are one of those different things. You're also all different ages, and in your case, there isn't anything to worry about. Zahn's right, Thomas. It's all good. Now I'm out and about, solving more medical mysteries. What causes hiccups? Do you ever get a thing where your eyelid flickers a little bit and you can't control it? Hiccups are a bit like that. It's the muscle under your lungs called your diaphragm. When the diaphragm spasms, <gasps> you get that hick. Dr Chris, why do we get trapped lips in the winter? It's because in the summer we sweat and so we leak lots of grease out from our pores, which keeps our skin nice and moist. And in the winter that doesn't happen. So when we lick our lips, we dry them out even more because we lick the grease off them. And so that's when they start flaking and peeling and cracking. Does that make sense? Yes. Back at the Ouchmobile, some fellow twins are in the waiting room. Next patient, please. But their question is all to do with their differences. So, India, Orchid, what's brought you to the Ouchmobile? I'm right-handed and I'm left-handed. I've got bigger feet and I got smaller feet. I'm shorter and she's taller. And we want to know why. Double trouble. What's the diagnosis, Doc? This sounds like a case of right twin, left twin, big foot, small foot, tall twin, short twin-itis. Sounds twin-tastic. Who's the older twin? I'm the older twin. I'm the older twin, actually, as well. How much older are you? I'm seven minutes older than Dr Chris. Ah, uh, we're ten. I'm ten you're minutes. You're ten minutes. So you're taller, older, bigger feet. <laughs> yeah. So this is quite interesting. So when twins are developing inside their mum, before they're born, there isn't as much room as there would be if there's just one baby. And one twin is usually a bit bigger than the other. It's a bit of competition for nutrients. So it looks like, India, you've just been the slightly larger twin. Were you bigger when you were born? Uh, I think by one pound or something. By about a pound. I think that's probably the explanation if you've just always been the slightly larger twin. And the left-handed thing? Normally in the population, people who aren't twins, about one in ten people is left-handed. But in twins, it's actually one in five, so it's twice as common. But no one's exactly sure why. Dear Orchid, thanks very much for coming in. It's really nice to have twins on the show. Job done for today. Then it closed. Ouch. Here you go, Chris. One baby. Tant, this is my baby. This is Lyra. Your niece. Whatever. And we're going to need some of the most disgusting things we can think of. First up, worms. <laughs> Here you go, here's oh. some yummy worms. What do you think of that? Look at that. This is not a baby that's disgusted by a worm, is it? Fair enough. Oh. Next up, maggots. This is good. really disgusting. Look at the move. She's got one in her hand. I mean, that is not a disgusted baby, is it? Right, if worms and maggots don't make you feel squeamish, Lyra, I'm going to pull out all the stops with this next thing. <laughs> Let's see if Lyra is disgusted by Rose. What do you think of Rose? Lyra seems very, very unbothered by Rose. And she's not bothered by the most disgusting thing of all, Dr Zahn's beard and bogeys. Not disgusted by anything. No, he's not Dada. I'm Dada. So all of those things might have made you feel a bit squeamish, but Lyra isn't reacting because she doesn't know how to feel squinched. It's only as you get older and learn more about the world around you that you start to develop these feelings of squeamishness, usually about the same things that the adults around you don't like. So we're going to put this to the test and see what happens when you are truly grossed out. Thank you, Lyra. I think you're done. 
it's time to bring on some older guests who are cordially invited to our disgusting dinner. <laughs> Welcome to the Ouch Disgusting Dining Experience. Joining us are Lennon, Kitty and James. Three foolish, I mean lucky, ouchers. We are going to be serving a meal of delightfully disgusting dishes whilst they eat and monitor their faces and heart rates so we can find out what feeling squeamish does to the body. Right, grubs up. Three, two, one, and voila. Ta -da! <laughs> On the menu today, jellied eels, Crickets, Mahani worms, fish eggs, stinky blue cheese, and a giant Thai water bug. This food is totally safe. We expect empty plates at the end of the meal. Oh, I don't know. Are those flies? That, is that eggs? Those are fish eggs, yeah. Oh! Oh. Now, Kitty's prepared a little spoonful of fish eggs and cooked crickets. So why don't you have a go at that? Looking at someone else eating it is like you're eating it. Our ouchers have all been making yuck faces. Their noses and foreheads wrinkled, they stuck out their tongues. This signals you're feeling disgusted and warns other people not to touch what's there. What is that? They made the yuck face because they have learnt that some things can be harmful, unlike Lyra, who hasn't learnt this yet. James is going to eat the water bug. Are you going to do it, James? Look how disgusting it is! James's pulse rate was 66, it's now 82. So even the thought of putting this into your mouth has started to make James's body prepare. He's having this thing called a fight or flight response. Oh. Your squeamish response is very similar to feeling afraid. Your heart rate increases, so you're ready to run away from whatever might be harmful. How's it going? I'm good. It's good. I don't believe you. Because <laughs> you're making your yuck face, you're squinting your eyes. Dessert time. Will our chocolate-covered mealworms and worm lollies also make our ouchers feel squeamish? Kitty, you're eating the chocolate with the mealworms on it. That's not bothering you? No. After our disgusting main course, sweets with a few insects don't seem so bad. Our ouchers learned from each other that they could try different things. So because they saw each other eating bugs, their squeamish feelings decreased because they learned the food wasn't harmful. Who's had this? Len's been licking that. Kitty, you'll eat the chocolate with the maggots, but you won't have the lollipop that Lennon's licked. Yeah. Why do you think you won't do that? His germs are on it. So that's an important point, is that there are some things that almost everyone is disgusted by. Poo and body fluids, particularly. 